From virtual to real, Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai. Over the next few months, a selection of Nissan's youngest racing drivers will be training for one of the world's toughest endurance races, the Dubai 24 Hours. We'll follow their highs and their lows as they attempt to make the grade in the world of professional motorsport. But unlike your average racing driver, there's one thing that makes these guys unique. They've all learnt their craft on a PlayStation. This is the race to Dubai. Since 2008, GT Academy has been turning PlayStation gamers into racing drivers, and the program has already produced three professional drivers. 2008 winner, Lucas Ordinez. In 2010, it was Jordan Tresson. In 2011, Jan Mardenborough. And in 2012, three more names will be added to that list of winners. European GT Academy winner, Wolfgang Reip, is one of them. Now that I reach a little part of my dream, I just want to keep pushing and achieve bigger goals and bigger dreams. Russian GT Academy winner, Mark Shulzitsky. For me, it's one chance, only this chance, and I want to take it. And German GT Academy winner, Peter Bischera. My whole experience in GT Academy was very fantastic. For me, it's like uh, they put me out of my normal life and throw me into a dream. Three months ago, they began their journey into the world of professional motor racing. This experience has definitely changed all my life. Before, I was studying and trying to work to, to have money. And now my work is to train to be as good as I can behind the steering wheel. So, yeah, it's incredible. So short time and you were really hard pushing, but it's for a good thing. It's to be a good driver at the end. Yeah, and it's a great experience. First month, it was really hard because a lot of training, a lot of te testing, you know, driving and physical assessment. Fitness side was my weakest point, I think. I improve a lot. All aspects I improve definitely, especially physical, because I never before training so hard like this. Um, for me, it was not one big thing that I improved. It was all parts together. Of course, the driving. I never drive any fast cars before in my life on a racetrack, um, so this improved a lot. Every time when I started race and started my tests, I, 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 learn, I learn something new, and for me, I have a big, big difference between three months and now. It's fantastic in, in this short time when you get very hard pushed how good you can be, and it's only the beginning. Really great human experience, and of course, uh, push more and more and more to do uh, what you need to do to be the best. So, since their arrival in the UK, all three feel they've improved in every way. Today, they're back in the high performance center for a second fitness assessment. You have three months of training here, and you can see exactly where you improve or not. The testing bank that we put them through back in perhaps in August um, required a range of um, elements of fitness, and they had to be put through things which they were completely unused to. Uh, in Peter's case, he was a very, very high-level sprinter, but we were asking him to do a, an aerobic endurance test. It was a very hard change for me, but I trained very hard in the last few months, very long running, bicycle. First time I came here, I realized that I had to improve uh, everything. Um, my cardio was not too bad, but my strength was. So, has all the hard work paid off? Are they as fit as professional racing drivers are? The first test is a running machine. I'm really nervous for this uh, first test. 
we tested them on the treadmill um, in a, a test which involves increasing the gradient every minute so it gets steeper and steeper and the idea is that we are trying to induce a maximal effort from their, their hearts, their circulatory systems. Well done. The aerobic test begins the long workout, but what's the assessment result? Good for you. I, I've actually probably not seen a group as motivated. The biggest change, which really pleases us a great deal, is the aerobic endurance. We measure values referred to as VO2 max, the maximal amount of oxygen that their bodies can use per minute. Uh, and we've seen huge increases in values. My VO2 max two months and a half ago was uh, 58, and uh, I reached day 66, which is a huge improvement. What it translates to is efficiency. They're less likely to overheat in the cars, they're less likely to reach levels of panic, um, they're less likely to fatigue and therefore their concentration stays high. Yeah, it was very painful, very hard really. I always suspect that it was easier because we trained so lot. It's so hard but I, I do good and I improve a lot. I, I feel I'm ready to Dubai now and in good condition. Yeah, I think fitness-wise I'm ready for Dubai. Um, I will keep training are to be even more fit, of course. But it's not just 2012 GT Academy winners preparing for the Dubai 24 hours. Their RJN Motorsports team are also busy with last-minute preparations. We need to load all the spares, the cars, into the container. The truck will come this afternoon, pick it up, take it to the docks, and then it'll be loaded onto a boat and be shipped round to Dubai ready for the race in January. We've been packing for what seems weeks. Um, the whole place is uh, in turmoil, but, um, but we're very close now to finally putting everything we hope that we need in that 40-foot sea container. We know what wears out, um, so you obviously take parts that you replace just before the race, um, but generally it's, it's accident damage that catches you out. What we don't take, we won't have. You could say sort of eight to ten weeks uh, we've been concentrating on getting the right spares together. We obviously haven't got enough to build one car complete because you need a shell, and, but we've got two engines, we've got enough suspension for two cars, um, dampers for two cars, we've got five sets of wheels per car, uh, we've got a spare gearbox, uh, we've got a considerable amount of parts. This is the last little bit of packing. Unless you actually see it, you can't believe the effort, can you? <laughs> It's slightly emotional because uh, we were here till three in the morning, so you get tired and uh, that's when you get emotional. So it's nice to have it done, yeah, very nice. So final preparations are made, but how do the 2012 winners feel as the Dubai 24 hours approach? For Dubai, I'm very happy, really. I can't wait for this, it could be tomorrow for me. I'm the man who takes the helm and sits in inside the race car. It's incredible feeling when it's happened. It really, I think, the most uh, best time of my life. Dubai uh, is really near. All we've done is to prepare as well as possible for Dubai. I think it's, it's so cool with 80,000 start, you know, so fast car and good track I see on uh, simulator. And it's cool, really, good, good weather. <laughs> I'm not scared, not anxious, not stressed, just excited. And to be on the grid uh, will be really a great feeling. 24 hours is so long, it's a long time to driving a race car. When you never do it, you can't uh, imagine how, how um, tough it is. The best thing that um, could happen is a podium. And what, what not should happen is a crash and a broken car. Over the last few months, these guys have been training really hard, basically for one goal, the 24 hour of Dubai in 2013. So um, they're going to be feeling the pressure. There's uh, so many different characteristics uh, of racing in, in Dubai 24 hours than uh, in UK. First of all, you have to be really fit. Uh, it's really hot weather, hot conditions. With 30 degrees outside, it becomes uh, really soon 60 degrees inside. Ferry pedals very hard in the car. Steering is quite heavy in the car. Also, the track is really 
challenging, no? Uh, lots of traffic. Also in Dubai, the night is quite long because it's winter. In Le Mans, for example, the night goes from 11 p.m. to 5 or 6, uh, but in Dubai, it's more like 8 to 8. The car runs faster in the dark because it's cooler, the track's cooler, the tires work better, the engine works better because the air's more dense and you just go faster, so um, that's enjoyable. Give your best and learn all the time. Everything you do, you need to learn and remember it, so it's quite hard because you see so many things that you need to remember everything. You just got, can't think about the pressure and got to do your job like they've been doing the few re the race weekends they've been doing so far to get their signatures. We have prepared them really well. Everything points to it going as smooth as you like, and normally when that points to that way in motor racing, it all goes completely the opposite. But uh, so far, we, we've got high hopes. Well, there's very little time until the 24 hours of Dubai, so 2011 GT Academy winner Jan Bardenbra has come to tell of his experiences in the race. One of the biggest factors for me going out there was basically the racing in the dark. It was only the second time I'd raced the car in the dark. And obviously with GT3 cars and slower cars, to really think about your overtakes, the drivers, they're gonna vary quite a lot. When you drive the race and after your stint, uh, where you're very, your body was very damaged or was it okay for you? you always have a bottle of water with you all the time. Um, because the sweat you lose, you use minerals, you use salt. It can get bad if you've got cramp in your legs and your performance will just drop. You need to be as fit as you can. Look after yourself out there physically. Eat the right food. Those sodium tablets that you, they've spoken to you about, always put those in your drink. It's a GT4 car, so production-based car, sequential gearbox. Could, maybe if the gearbox is on its way out. If you can afford to use, say, third gear instead of second gear for a hairpin, changing up a higher gear can help it last towards the end of the race. So um, if you have an issue with the car and the, get, the car gets fixed, don't go out and try to regain all that time driving flat out. Instead of the tires lasting an hour and a half, two hours, you have to pit every hour because you've ruined the tires. Keep really calm, and it's 24 hours. You do about three, over 350 laps there, so you have plenty of time to catch leaders, um, catch people in the race if you have an issue with the car. The first three hours are quite critical. You, it's Everyone is driving quite fast, especially in the first hour. Everyone's driving really fast just to get their position. It's quite crazy at the start of the race. Do you sleep a little bit between your stint in the night, or...? I didn't think there was enough time, but there is time for you to, just to have a little half an hour's sleep or so. But, yeah, I'd recommend doing that. Try not to race each other in terms of lap time in the race. You can do that in the practices. Just have, just have fun, just enjoy it as much as you can. So, after all the advice, training and racing, Wolfgang Mark and Peter's time in the UK has come to an end. All they have to do now is race at the Dubai 24 hours. Next time on Race to Dubai, the 2012 winners arrive in Dubai to prepare for the 24 hour race. From virtual to real, Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai.